Hello and welcome to another episode of the Reach for Greatness um, podcast. Um, this is Sabine Mataru and today I'm with special guest Gemma Regalado who is a website consultant. And as you know at Reach for Greatness we are all here to help the business startups and growth. We're here to promote, support and also bring you some hints and tips. So um, I'll find Gemma um, through Facebook and we connected up and I saw the fantastic work she's been doing and um, she's got a fantastic blog as well. So Gemma, over to you. Just let us know what you're going to talk to us and um, what you actually do. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on. It's, um, it's a real pleasure to actually be able to talk about this. Otherwise, I get locked up in my office for a long time without anybody to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> So I think um, the, the main thing I'm going to talk about right now is actually how you set up your site and what you need to be thinking about before you're setting up your website. So a lot of people jump into getting a website straight away, whether it's, you know, talking to a website designer or whether it's, um, whether it's just setting up WordPress or Weebly or Wix or whatever you do. And the fact is that you kind of need to dial back a little bit. So in the same way with business, when we're, when we're starting a business, we need to have a, a strong understanding of, of what our business is actually about and who it's for. We exactly need to have that with our websites as well. So before we're diving in, jumping on and getting WordPress and signing up for hosting and massive packages and themes here and fonts over there and design packages and website designers that's not what you need the first thing that you need is clarity when it comes to having a brand new website mm -hmm. so um a lot of people don't realize that obviously starting a business and starting a website are actually very similar things in the fact that you need that clarity before that you can really start and go ahead and also you need to be aware that when you do start your website in the, in the same way that when you start your business, you need to have that freedom to let it evolve over time because I guarantee you your business at the start will change after six months. It will change after a year. It will change after two years, whether that's just simply it's getting bigger or you completely change direction. You need to have the flexibility with everything that you do in your business and in your website as well so your website is your shop window it's your shop window into your business <laughs> so that's why they're so closely linked and why you need to have the clarity on both not just on one and then jump in and do your website your website is not an afterthought so the predominant thing you need to be thinking of, first of all is who you are what you actually do and who you are doing that for so those are three things that you need to think about long and hard before you even think about what platform you're using or what colors you're going to be using that sort of stuff doesn't matter as much because once you've got those three things who you are what you do and who you're doing it for you start to build around your brand your identity your website around those three things and that's the most important thing so obviously once you've got that you've sat down you've written down exactly what you want to do what you're selling what you're who you're who you're selling it to who you're serving mm -hmm. best you can then start to figure out a lot more of the business area of things which is you know how you'd like to package it up and those sorts of things so once you've got that information how you want to package it up and how you want to be seen online and how you want to talk and how you know what platforms you're going to be on in terms of social media or email and those sorts of things you're starting to get an idea of what you're actually going to be able to put in your website so the second thing is obviously after you've figured out your three things your top three things mm -hmm. is to figure out exactly um uh what you're actually putting in your website so at this point, still at number two, we have not created a website yet. I repeat, we have not. Okay. A website. So, what do you um, would you suggest to someone just sort of getting a word document together or just keep the paper yeah. and sort of just putting all the thoughts together? Exactly. It's however you work best. So, a lot of people just 
they grab a notepad and a pen and they'll write down the sorts of things that are going to go into the website. So you can put, oh, I need to have a sign up form for my email list. I need to make sure that I can sell my course at some point. I need to make sure that I have access, you know, direct links to Instagram if you're, you know, if you're big on pictures um, or I have a Facebook feed or something like that on my on my website. Now, the fact is that you will, you will do this and you'll have a look and you'll have probably loads and loads of different things on your page. And that's, that's good. You want to have lots to start with and then you're going to edit it down because the next stage that you're going to get to sort of stage number three is actually going to be talking much, much more about um, what you're specifically going to be having on each of the pages that you want to have. So you can now split Split that content into different pages. So obviously things like your home page, your about page, how people get to work with you page, a contact page, for example, mm -hmm. if you're going to be having a blog or not. So now you can separate those out. So step number three is separate all of that content out into different pages and what's going to be where. Um, you also need to, to make sure on, on this part that actually what you're doing is editing down all the things that you want people to do. So predominantly when the, mis the biggest mistake that I see with people when they're first starting a website is they, they throw all the information at people. They're like, here, I have all my information and buy my stuff and sign up for this list and go to Facebook and then go to Instagram and then do all the things. And here's some adverts as well. So you kind of just need to dial that down a lot. The fact is that people get very overwhelmed on websites. Life is overwhelming as enough as it is, you know, especially as a mum, I can imagine that lots of, <laughs> lots of your um, viewers and lots of your listeners are probably mums as well or have family lives mm. or just have very busy lives in general. It's a, it's a lot of noise on the internet already. And um, I mean, I personally always like the, the pages that give me some sort of golden nuggets where I go on to something and I know, you know what, I, what I'm getting and it's something quick read and I think, oh, okay, this is an interesting read on what does this person do you know and then it makes you sort of more explore more pages on that web page so when it comes to websites simplicity is always the best thing and you may you need to make sure that when you are creating or just just not i don't mean actually creating the websites themselves i just mean when you're thinking about the content that's going into each page each page needs to have one just one specific action that you want people to take whether that might be sign up for an email list for example and or you know even if it's just read another blog post click on to more about you read about what you're doing in the world read about how they can work with you i wouldn't necessarily recommend that all of them should be definitely buy my stuff right now because Let's be honest, no one likes to be bombarded with that kind of message when they've just got to your website. You don't want to go on to somebody's website and it's constantly buy my stuff and buy this and buy this. You're like, oh, I just want to know about you. I want to know if you're for me. I want to know if this stuff is going to help me. So give them that information way, way, way before, you know, you need to make sure that you've primed them and prepped them into buying rather than just saying buy my stuff. Absolutely. Why should they? Absolutely. And, and it's all about creating um, sort of that relationship with, with your reader, first and foremost, they need to get to know you, they need to like, um, know and trust you before they would ever consider buying anything from you. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And in the same way that with business, that's how you do it. You know, you don't expect to be marketing to people straight away. You would have if you're a coach, for example, maybe you'd have a discovery call with somebody. Mm -hmm. um, I know for myself when I've done website design in the past that I would have, you know, initial emails with people finding out what they want. And then I'd have a consultation with them. And then over, after then, you know, I'd make the, the offer I'd say do you want to sign up and set this up and people would say yes or no so that's how you need to think about it these you are dealing with people so this is your an interface between you and other people it just means that you can get to more people that's it but you're still dealing with people at the end of the line it's another person who's reading your website so you need to be always very careful about not overwhelming people and just making sure that everything is simple and it's designed to be you know to do one specific thing on each particular page um, so once you've got to that point you've kind of written down all your notes and you've decided what 
is going into that page and what action you want people to take on those pages, you can then start thinking about how it's going to look and what platform you're going to be using. So like I said before at the start, you need to make sure that it is flexible so that something that you are using is going to be able to help you grow. It's going to help your business evolve. It's not going to be an issue if you suddenly decide to completely change your mind and change your direction, which a lot of people do. You know, there's, I, I don't know anybody who, when they started out is doing exactly the same business yeah. now, just, you know, I've been in business for five, six years now. So it's just not something it's that happens. curing, isn't it? It's evolving. More ideas, you meet other people, it's going different directions. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a great thing. That's a great process to go through because you're growing in that process. Yeah, exactly. It's it's so true. So when you're thinking of a platform to use, definitely use something that's going to give you that flexibility. Um, I always recommend WordPress for this specifically, but there are there are other platforms out there that that would that would work just as well. So um, things like Squarespace, for example, is another really good idea. Um, it can, you know, a lot of people think it's 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 simpler to use um, than WordPress. But yes, it does certainly have limitations. With WordPress, it's your own. You're not limited to just using Squarespace as your hosting. Um, you know, and things like Wix and Weebly. I know a lot of people set up those sorts of things straight away. Um, and then may have problems sort of moving stuff across or what they actually are able to do. So I think it's really important to understand that choosing something that is as flexible as you can, but within your technological understanding and knowledge is exactly what you should do. I obviously advocate WordPress, but it's not for everybody. It really is not for everybody. So I don't want to sit here saying, yes, you should go with WordPress because if yeah. it's not for you, there are some people who just yeah. find it too, just too much. And that's okay. Just try out different platforms. If you're not sure about signing up for WordPress and having the hosting and domain name and that sort of stuff, try the wordpress.com first of all. That's the free version of WordPress, which is hosted on WordPress servers. Yes, there's a limitation to what you can do, but if it just gets you, you know, to figure out how to add a post or add a page or how your content's going to look online and just a, a learning curve. If that's going to help start there because you can always move to the wordpress.org, which is the self hosted version further on down the line. It's called so WordPress, wordpress.com. Yes. That's where you can have a free account. You can set up a free website. Yeah. Like a small one, I guess with a couple of pages just to get you started and sort of yeah. a training ground before you then in, go to invest on yeah. Do you need a domain name for that as well? Or you just get, so you just get given, you just get assigned something. Yeah. You have a, a username, for example. Um, so it'll be your username dot wordpress.com. So yeah, there, you know, it might not necessarily look as professional initially, but at, at the start, you're trying to validate your business and you're trying to validate your website. Um, so what you need to do, first of all, it doesn't really matter if it's wordpress.com or you know, if it's your domain name.com, the fact is that you need to get sales and business to, to you. So starting with a wordpress.com free website, absolutely fine. If you can validate your business and see that it's actually going to be making you some money, which is the most important thing. You know, the reason we start businesses is because they, that, you know, they take over from a job or from some sort of other monetary income that we've had. Yes, of course we want to help people, but I think we be stupid and foolish to say that we, we don't want to do it to earn money because obviously we do so it is important to make sure mm. that that you are starting on the right platform um and start start slowly learn as you go and then you can always move on to something later excellent thank you very very much Gemma. that was amazing couple of golden nuggets even for myself Thinking, oh my god yeah i mean it's a complete overwhelm when you when you want to start your own website and you think oh my god you know there's so many amazing websites out there already and you just want to have it all right so you've broken it down really nicely and um You're still here? Yes. Oh, good. Yes, I am. Just sort of like it froze for a second. <laughs> it froze a little bit. Anyway, um, Gemma, just let us know um, where you can be found on the web and where. 
this yeah, sure. and share a lot of inf great information on your own blog so let's just Thank be know where they can find you yeah sure so my um my website is at gemma regalado.com um gemma with a g and regalado is r-e-g-a-l-a-d-o.com um and yeah i have a blog over there I have, you can come and find me on Facebook if you want to as well. Those are probably the two main places that you'll find me, even though I'm getting a little bit obsessed with Snapchat at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll add a link below this video anyway. Um, and well, thank you very much once more. And um, I know Gemma, we're going to be doing another um, podcast on uh, another topic, I think. Absolutely. Uh, is creating websites and web pages that really convert. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So tune in again. Thank you very much. This is Sabine Mataru from Reach for Greatness and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.